welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Court Winsett. Hello, Katie. And Cameron Spann. I feel rested. I feel rested. Labor Day was good. What about for y'all? It's mm. good. I had a busy Labor Day weekend, so uh, I wouldn't say I came in feeling super, super rested. <laughs> you were laboring on Labor Day. I, I did. Yeah. Well, I, I labored on the Friday before Labor Day. To be. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Actually, I guess I did labor on Labor Day, too, because yesterday I was cutting grass. So, yeah, uh, yeah I had a busy working weekend. Always going to be working. Mm. Okay, so this one's kind of a fun one, but you were listening to this episode the week before a very superstitious day. Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. And so this episode is Money Superstitions. Mm, Yeah. We are getting closer. We are in September, so we're starting to get closer to that spooky season. So superstitions, Friday the 13th coming up. October's around the corner. Let's talk about some money superstitions. So this episode is kind of a big list. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to have a list and then discussion. This is more of the discussion is the list. Yeah. So let's start this off. Okay. Money superstitions from around the world. See a penny, pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. We've all heard that. Absolutely. So this belief is that finding a penny, especially heads up, brings good luck, while tails up could bring bad luck unless flipped over for someone else to find. Mm -hmm. We've all heard that. Yeah, yeah. So you see the penny. Oh, okay. Well, tails is up. You flip it over, and then you're hopefully giving good luck to the next person who finds it. Yeah, find a penny, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck. I didn't know about the heads up part. So you want to see Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Lincoln needs to look into your soul and wish you good luck. Yeah, because I think a lot of people just pick up a penny, but... I couldn't swear 100%, but I feel like probably my first exposure to this idiom, whatever it was... Um, in Greece, the movie. Yep. Yep. She, yeah. Yeah. She finds Make a penny. A penny and, and, it up. Yeah. <laughs> Greece teaching so many life lessons. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, the next one on here is a uh, purse on the floor is money out the door. Does that mean it will be stolen? That's what I would kind of assume. But according to Chinese culture, it's bad feng shui to uh, put your purse on the floor. It's a sign that you're disregarding your money and your wealth. So you should How always did, keep he, your. I always say it feng shui. Feng shui is the Americanized, yeah. Okay. Feng shui. Feng shui. You were making it sound like great. Mm. I just was feng like. Feng shui. I'm just American. Feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> um, so supposedly you're supposed to always keep your purse at waist length or higher. It's interesting. Um, I don't know that in my limited experience with people in purses, because I don't carry one. I think um, I've I've seen my wife set her purse down on the floor or mm-hmm. Hang it off the the back of her chair sometimes if she you know if she carries that massive thing into like a restaurant with her or something she may do that but I th- I'm pretty sure she's occasionally set it on the floor too. I mean sometimes that's your option. A lot of like restaurants will have like hooks underneath their yeah. tables, but in Europe they very much go along with this because they'll actually bring you like a little seat side table side little your... seat thing that your purse can sit on. That's cool. And that's why a lot, of, a lot of women get excited when it's like there's an extra chair at the table. Oh, that's where all the purses can go. Because mm-hmm. hmm. it's, I mean, also it's, you know, you don't want to put your purse on the dirty floor. Yeah. I mean, like the floor, if the floor is nasty, the last thing you want to do is put your, I don't know, insert name of really expensive nurse purse <laughs> brand here on the floor. Louis Vuitton. Oh, okay. I have no idea. <laughs> you guys ever have itchy palms? I have... <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, yes. I'm sure I have had itchy palms before. The reason I ask is because that's the next on the list. The next superstition is itchy palms. There's a widespread belief that if your, oh, it's your right palm, if it itches, you're going to receive money. But if your left palm itches, you'll lose money. Uh, And if they both itch, you need a cream. (laughs) See, kind of like the uh, heads up, tails up of the penny. I didn't know that it was that which hand itching mattered. I I thought it was just if your hand itches, then it means you're going to get some money. I've never heard the second part of that superstition. I wonder why every time I go to the grocery store, my left palm itches. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. um, So I was familiar with most of this one, but now I feel like a failure that I didn't know the rest of it. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue is what I always knew. And that's talking about your wedding day. Mm -hmm. It says, and a silver sixpence in her shoe. Well, that's decidedly British there, so... Everyone knows the classic tradition of the first three. Well, I know the first four. Old, new, borrowed, blue. But since the 1500s, it's been a tradition for a bride to have a sixpence popped into her shoe. Nowadays, you can actually buy shoes with the silver coin already in them. It's pretty cool. Hmm. I'm not going to tell everybody I know who's going to get married, like... 
you need to put mm. coin in your shoe. Yeah. I like it. I'm I'm sad. Like I need to go back. Dad, <laughs> I gotta do the wedding now. again. <laughs> too late now. Okay. Uh next one on the list is uh, easily the grossest one we've had thus far. Bird droppings on you. Okay. So in Turkey, many people believe getting pooped on by a bird is a symbol of good things to come. It's even tradition to buy a lottery ticket on the same day it happens. So I've, if you I've ever get that. pooped on, go buy that lottery ticket. What I've, if a turkey poops on you? I mean, that would just be... Turkey, the country. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they have turkeys. <laughs> All right, next on the list is a spider in your pocket means money is coming. In uh, my world, if a spider's in my pocket, I'm yeah. burning my pants. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting out of the pants as quickly as possible and <laughs> burning them. From Great Britain to the Caribbean islands, it is believed that an eight-legged spider... Is there another type of spider? Aren't well, all spiders eight-legged? Uh, okay, so there are some other... Arachnid? It, or, like, people think of some other things as, as spiders that do not have eight legs, gotcha. but they're, they're technically not spiders, right? Okay. Uh, at least that's my opinion. <laughs> so if these eight-legged freaks are caught and pocketed, a.k.a. a money spider, it means that wealth will soon be woven into your life. Ooh, I like that, woven. A money spider in your hair is supposed to bring good luck and increased riches. Oh. Um, No. Again, I'm, freak out. <laughs> these are some disturbing thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the number eight. Mm -hmm. In Chinese culture, the number eight is considered extremely lucky because it sounds like the word for wealth or prosperity. That's my favorite number. Interesting. There's a lot of cultures that have like numbers or different things because my sister-in-law works for a home builder and talks about specifically like the Indian culture has very specific days that they can close on their houses, days that they can buy things. And so obviously Chinese culture has a lot of that. So there's a lot of different cultures that have numbers associated with what they stay away from and what they want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Back to it's your favorite number. Why do you have a favorite number and why is it eight? I'm not obsessed with it, but uh, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's like an infinity mm, symbol. It's just okay, a yeah. one swoop and you're done with you it. You don't have a favorite number? I'm, the number that I will pick if you tell me to randomly pick a number from one through ten is almost always going to be seven. Uh, I've pegged you as a seven. -er. Yeah. I've always liked the number 18. Mm. 18. I like that. I don't live and die by the number eight, but when I see it, I'm like, hmm, it's a good looking number. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good-looking number eight. <laughs> All right, next, blowing on dice. Okay, so in gambling, particularly in games involving dice, so like craps, blowing on them before rolling is thought to bring good luck and increase the chance of winning. I saw that this was going to be my thing, so I wanted to do a callback to the lucky number eight. You know, some people consider the seven, mm -hmm. even though it's craps, they also consider it a lucky number because if you roll it on your first roll out, then... You win, right? Right. Um, so seven has that that sort of lucky element to it. Of course, it can also be bad if you roll a seven later on and you're trying to hit your other number before you hit the seven. Right. Um, but anyway, people do call it like lucky number seven and uh, apparently not the Chinese. Chinese call it lucky number eight. So um, but yeah, blowing on dice never worked for me. I'm really bad at craps. So I hate spending time at the craps table. I almost always lose my Your money. Your crap at quickly. the craps table? Yeah, it's it's really garbage. Crap shoot. Yep. All right, now we're talking again about money and shoes. Placing a coin in your shoe before going to a job interview or important meeting is believed to bring financial success. Hmm. I'm just going to totally BS here and, and tell everybody that's listening that that's actually where the trend of putting a penny slot on your penny loafers came from. The shoemakers, oh. the cobblers, when they first started making penny loafers, they were they were made for young gents who were going out for their first job interview. And they had the spot there for a penny so that the gent could have a penny in his shoe while he was at the job interview. Now, I just completely made all of that up. So... I but it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> a little inside baseball. When Court and I interview potential employees, we actually make them take their shoe off and we look to see if there's a penny in there. And Indeed. if there is, we actually hire them on the, <laughs> on the spot. On the spot. On the spot. Well, it has to be a, with Lincoln Show, it has to be heads up. It has up. to be. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. So when you find that penny and you pick it up, then you put it in your shoe mm -hmm. and you're good to go. Yes. Then you have a job. Yeah. Tossing money into a fountain. The Three trevi. coins in a fountain. Yes, that uh, Kristen Bell movie when in Rome with mm -hmm. the pennies and stuff like that. Lots of movies around tossing money into a fountain. Centuries ago in Europe, having clean water was seen as a gift from the gods. So people left money as offerings to keep the water flowing. Now it's believed to bring good luck and financial prosperity. Nothing says clean water like nasty pennies that have touched pennies. many fingers mm -hmm. in your water. Yeah. Yep. So I've always wondered... 
who it is that goes into these fountains and takes the money out because at some point they've got to harvest the money. I saw a video last week. It's funny you bring that up of the Trevi fountain in Rome and it's Mm -hmm. the city employees. They drain the fountain and then they use push brooms. The amount of pennies was insane or coins, whatever coins you use was insane. It was just a massive pile that they're just push brooming. That's crazy. What do they do with it once they've Swept it all up. Probably goes, probably goes to the government. Government, like mm-hmm. beautifying the or maintenance of the fountain. I mean, yeah, it probably does actually. It's probably dedicated to the fountain yeah. maintenance. Yeah. Aren't there some cultures though that I've, I've been watching a show too much about putting a coin in somebody's mouth to send you to the underworld? Well, so, sure. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's Jeff Goldblum's new show. Oh, chaos. oh, chaos with a K. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, but aren't there some cultures that when you pass away, you've got coins yeah, on your on eyes. eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. again is to pay the toll to I mean I think anytime you're getting coins with a dead body it's almost always to pay, pay somebody to, to heaven cross a river or you know yeah get through wherever a, wherever a, you're going. Yeah. <laughs> now who takes those coins? That's what I want to know. Oh well the underworld. Yeah, you know, they just disappear. Grave robbers. Grave yeah. robbers. Yeah. Yeah. And then they get cursed. They do. Yeah. I mean that's just what happens when you rob in graves. You get cursed, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the last one on the list is eating greens on New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it's a New Year's tradition to eat black-eyed peas and collard greens. This tradition originated during the Civil War when people were lucky to have peas to eat and survive the winter. I do this. We do it too. Yeah, this is tradition. David Pickler's absolute favorite thing to do. It's Mm -hmm. tradition. You got to do it. You got to have the black-eyed bee. Black eyed bees, black eyed peas, and turnip greens. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. One year I suggested to Robin that it would be sufficient if we just listened to a black eyed peas song. <laughs> Let's get it started. Yeah, yeah. I say, do y'all like them? I like them with Tabasco on them. I have to put hot sauce on my. I, 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 I generally, my mom, I don't know what this says about my mom's preferences for, for beans, but she raised me eating all kinds of beans. Okay. So I've pretty much eaten every kind of bean there there is, and I am an equal opportunity bean eater for the most part. About the only one that I really don't like is I'm not a fan of kidney beans. I've never been yeah. big on kidney beans. I don't know beans, that I've tried kidney. I'll pretty much eat any other kind of bean. The black eyed peas just don't have a lot of flavor to it. So right. I agree. You yeah. gotta add some like chow chow or some hot sauce mm-hmm. or whatever. My mom knows that we do not like the collard greens very mm-hmm. much. And so she has concocted this amazing casserole. And it's collard greens and it's got cheese and mushroom and tomatoes in it and onion. And it's just like this cheesy goodness. And so you taste the cheese in there. Mm. But you're getting the, it's like that's the method to then get the collard greens in your mouth. It's like hiding a pill in a slice of salami for your dog. <laughs> it is. But we'll eat like a couple of servings of that versus like if you just give me like the collard greens. It's like, well, got to take this. But I've always been raised that way. How would y'all classify yourselves in terms of like if there was a scale? of one to ten with one being the least superstitious and ten being the most superstitious where do you think you land on that scale a one a Absolutely. one yeah um, just personally i don't know that i would necessarily say i'm a one i may be like a two or a three you know i for instance would never when my kids were still kids i would never tell somebody that i couldn't do something or that i couldn't be somewhere because my children were sick, mm-hmm. because I was always afraid that if I used that as an excuse, then they would actually get sick. So I guess I don't necessarily, it's not necessarily a superstition thing, but I do very much believe in karma and that, you know, you, you're going to get back what you put out in the world. So <laughs> what about you, Katie? I mean, it's not going to be a shocker. I'm probably more a four or five. Mm. That's not as much as I thought. It, it depends on what the what the area is like, you know, s- step on the crack and the sidewalk and you break your mother's back. Like, no, Clearly not. Yeah. No, but you know, I definitely like. I did the something borrowed, something blue, something old, something new. Mm-hmm. Um, if I know about different superstitions and traditions, then I do it. For instance, the black eyed pea thing. I don't buy into the fact that that's that my year is going to be ruined if I don't eat black eyed peas. But I just do it because it's you know it's just more tradition. Those, tradition. Yeah, tradition. It's yeah. Just one of those goofs that you do every every yeah. New Year's Day. I think it's more tradition. I think when I was dancing a lot, I before performances, like I kind of had my my routine of what I would do. And if mm. it was off, then I felt like I was off for the rest of the day. Mm. So I guess in some ways, and that's not uncommon for in like the theater or the performing arts world for you to have more superstitions mm. about like, you know, don't say break a leg, don't stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So I, 
I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm not full, like, bought into it 100% that I'm, like, so superstitious. Like, I know my sister-in-law, Alabama football, she has this one shirt, and if she does not have this shirt with her every game, then she feels like they're doomed. Mm. Yeah, sports superstitions are a real thing. Yeah. Um, and there's a fine line between superstition and routine, which you talked about dancing, yeah. and tradition. They yeah. kind of all get mixed together. Yeah. Personally, I don't believe in luck. I wish people good luck just out of mm. a kindness or whatever, but I don't, I don't You have really... to create your luck. Yeah, it's just life, you know? Mm-hmm. Good things happen, bad things happen. I think I believe in karma more. <laughs> Since we are talking like superstition, a little spooky, I mean, I believe there's ghosts. Well, I sure. believe there I mean, may be, so, you know, like... You've seen one. Yeah, so I think that it's one of those, you know, those people that steal the coins off of uh, the dead, you know, karma's going to come back and get them. Mm-hmm. They're going to have some issues. And so, yes, I, I believe a little bit more than you guys, but not fully mm-hmm. to that extent. Okay, universal themes and connections. So common human fears. These superstitions serve as a coping mechanism that help people feel like they have some control over their financial destiny, even when external factors seem unpredictable. I mean, you do absolutely have control over your financial destiny. Is that what the yeah financial, financial destiny? destiny. Yeah. Um, that is definitely a lot of that is within your control. You can't necessarily control the market. Uh, you know, there there are you can things, only control what you can control. Yeah, exactly. So focus on what you can control, and you can control your spending. You can control your saving. You can't control. The unknowns. You can't control what the market's going to do. You can't control if emergency happens, but you can prepare Mm -hmm. for said emergency. But yeah, I I agree that you're almost delusional if you're just, you know, doing everything with eights and blowing on dice and putting money in your shoes. And because it's like if you haven't prepared for that interview and you just put a coin in your shoe, no. Mm -hmm. But if it makes you feel better that, I've studied for the test, I've, or I've prepared for that interview. I've done everything possible. Here's my little extra oomph. Great. If that makes you feel better, because it's like people have like lucky bracelets, lucky hair ties, like lucky different things, rings that they'll wear when they're taking a test. They're going to a job interview. They're, they're going through a, a rough day. But it, again, that's a coping mechanism. Mm. You have put in all the work. You have led your path that direction. And if anything, that just gives you that extra boost. That gives you that confidence that for some reason your lucky talisman is with you. Yeah, that's right. Um, So fear is a big universal theme, Mm -hmm. of course. And another big universal theme is the hope for prosperity. So this universal desire for prosperity transcends cultural boundaries. It's everyone showing how deeply ingrained financial aspirations are in the human experience. Everyone wants to be prosperous. I can't think of a single human who would not want to be. No. Even if you're living off the grid, making your own garden, you want prosperity in the garden. You you know, yeah, everything, you, you, money. You want that extra vegetable. Yeah, that's right. Extra veggie. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and even if you're, like, giving back all the time, like, you're wanting to have abundance yourself, so then you are in the ability to give back even more. Right. And it's big in uh, Asian cultures, the prosperity thing. They've got their lucky numbers. They've got yeah. little lucky cats you see on the counters. <laughs> the ones. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one. That yeah. Do. <laughs> the ones that are <laughs> our hands are kind of waving up and down. Yes. In that visual aid, <laughs> yes, that's right, <laughs> comes in handy. Um, interesting that I'm the one that's that's got this particular topic. <laughs> Uh, the power of belief. So when people truly believe that a certain action will bring them financial luck, it can actually influence their behavior in ways that might improve their financial situation, even if indirectly. Somebody give me an example of that because I don't... Dress for the job you want, not the one you have. Okay. But that is that luck related? You know, it's belief. Belief. When people truly believe that a certain action will bring them financial luck, it can actually influence their behavior. Mm-hmm. So... Yes and no. If you're working at McDonald's, but you want to work in a marketing firm, obviously you can't wear a marketing firm type outfit to McDonald's. But if you then go into that interview, you dress the part, that's going to give you that belief that like, I fit in here. I belong. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Walt Disney had a famous quote that ties into here where he said, if you can dream it, you can do Do it. it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not 100% sold on that. It's like, okay, I can dream of being... CEO of Apple. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are for a those lot of that believe in luck, luck's involved, and of course, a lot of experience. And work. I, I think it's just meant to motivate people to work hard, follow, follow your dreams, you know. Yeah. Follow your dreams. And if it's important to you, then have the drive. Don't give up and keep looking for connections and look for a roadmap of 
and we talk to people all the time about this, look at the job you have right now as a stepping stone to then get you to where you want to be. But the thing is, is like you as a little kid may dream to be the CEO of Apple, but then you go to this job, which you think is then going to bring you to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. But while you're going through that journey, you may pivot and change to a totally different direction. And so I think the whole thing is having belief in yourself that you can do it. You can get to where you want to be. You have the mindset to do what you want to do and you will put yourself in those situations. But you can't sit around and go, I hope the boss recognizes me and knows how hard I'm working unless you get that conversation with the boss and say, look, I want to be here. I want to be successful. This is what I'm doing so far. What other things can I do to make a difference? Right. Well, the reason I originally said what I said when I first saw the the heading, the power of belief, I thought we were delving into that topic of you know, visualizing success and stuff like that and how that can really affect your success level if you visualize it and believe it's going to happen and so forth. And I guess this is along those same lines, but it is a little bit different than what I was expecting. Um, Yeah. And a little shout out to, y'all probably heard us talk about David Pickler's new book, Pillars of Purpose, but there's a chapter called Power of the Possible, which talks Mm -hmm. just about that. The power of connections, you have this like dream you want to do, and it's just all about knowing the right people and passing the word along. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what you can accomplish. Yeah. Don't give up. Up when you reach what you think is a dead end, pivot. Yeah, mm. but I mean, I, they talk about that power of belief. Of I've seen it a lot with athletes, but different things. But it could be anybody. Like mentally viewing yourself doing a triple axel, or like you know, visualizing it, thinking about it, going through the motions. Like, and then you will get it. Mm-hmm. It works for different people. Some people can visualize like I will pass this test, or I will become the CEO. I can do this. There's a bad side to that because some people get so cocky into the belief of, no, I've seen it. I believe it. This is going to happen that they miss some of the elements to then get them there. Yeah. A big term these days is manifesting something. You manifest it, which is that's what I was trying to. It's kind of that that it's a little cocky to me. I'm going to manifest this to happen. Yeah. Okay. good luck. It it may happen, but it's not because you manifested it out of thin air. No, it's because you put the steps in to get it done. But if that's what you have to tell yourself and then because you've said... I'm going to manifest that I'm going to get this job. You then maybe that motivates you of like, okay, I got to I got to get it together. I've got to make this happen because I've told people I've manifested this. Yep. You want to talk about global similarities before we wrap this show up? Yeah. So global similarities, the concept of avoiding bad luck or attracting wealth is nearly universal. Well, duh. Everyone wants to avoid bad luck. Opening up an umbrella inside a building. Like I still think about that one. Yeah. Black cats walking under a ladder. Cracked mirror. I yeah. Mean, the list goes on and on. Whether it's through an itchy palm or tossing a coin into the fountain. I mean, I'm still going to toss a coin into the fountain. Because it's fun. I'm not a coin tosser. I mean, A, usually I don't have any coins on me right. anymore. I'm very rarely am I walking around with some change in my pocket. But the idea, it was not one that ever sunk in with me. And I never, yeah. I never bought into it. Yeah. So this shows that across the world, people have always had a mix of hope and anxiety about their finances. Duh. Well, I mean, I mean, like, it's just it is as a human being, you of there are certain things that you avoid. You avoid pain. You avoid uh, failure if you can. Mm-hmm. You avoid starving, which I guess comes back to pain. You know, there, there are certain things that no matter what, you're always going to try and avoid those. And then there are other things that you're try, going to try and accomplish. Feeling good, you know, that dopamine that hits you when you Success, when you do something that makes luck. you happy. Success, financially or otherwise, you know, uh, a full stomach. So a lot of the superstitions that we've talked about are just things that have kind of developed as ideas that people had for how they could do that, how yeah. they could avoid something or how they could accomplish something. And that's fine. It's such a good way to close the show because any good financial advisor will – help you with this, with your hopes and anxieties, they should help you balance it out. And if you have a lot of anxiety, they can kind of put you on the right track and get you to your goal. Yeah. I mean, finances are scary, but it's understanding that some of these things are, you know, coping mechanisms they are there. But at the end of the day, you have to take control of your financial situation. You've got to Look at these different superstitions as, you know, some fun, as some mystery to your every day. But at the end of the day, you have to put in the work. You have to talk to somebody. If you don't feel like you want to handle it yourself, you know, get partners, have those advocates that are willing to help you and talk through the tough times. And my two cents on this part is that 
a lot of people can handle their finances when things are going well. And then when something shows up unexpectedly, somebody loses their job, kid gets sick, and there's a lot of expenses, something like that happens. That's when a lot of people panic and they can't do it by themselves because they're so focused on the one singular thing and can't see outside to look at the overall picture. And so that's where it's kind of having those financial partners. Absolutely. Pair them with financial practices to make your money work for you. Obviously, uh, you know, we'd love to see some comments or stories from you guys on some of these different superstitions we maybe didn't mention, like we already said, the umbrella and the black cat and the ladder and mirrors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But superstitions are definitely something that's in religion. It's in different cultures. And uh, but at the end of the day, everyone wants financial peace. They want to know that they've got a plan of what's going to happen to them, you know, whether their finances go one way or the other. And so that's the ultimate superstition is if you don't have a plan, Mm -hmm. that's a little scary. Yep. Oh, guess what, guys? There's the closing bell. Ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast beam directly to your device every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about Cortland, Cameron, Katie, or Nicole, please feel free to go to our website. That website is bullcastpodcast.com. Our bios are up there. We've got some pictures. We also have a place where you can leave a comment, suggest a topic you'd like to hear us talk about, or maybe suggest a guest you'd like to see us have on our show. But I mentioned pictures. If you like pictures, if you really like pictures, you should go on over to Instagram, because we do have an Instagram handle. That handle is at Bullcast Podcast. We also have an X handle. That handle is at Bullcast Podcast as well. And then finally, we have a Facebook page. That page is Bullcast The Podcast. But wait, there's more. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron, Katie, and I have all frequently talked about the fact that we work at a place called Pickle Wealth Advisors. And if you'd like to find out more about what we do, uh, find out about what we can potentially do for you, find out about our amazing team, and find out about our boss, David Pickler, then please feel free to go to that website. That website is picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not an E. Ladies and gentlemen, we have given you everything you need to go forth into the world and not worry about breaking your mother's back. So for now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. I'm Cam. And we're done. <laughs>